Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to retest the Soviet Lunar Sample Return Mission. That's Luna 15 slash 16, 20 or 24. 15 failed, the other three succeeded. And uh, I have made a model of this. Last time it worked pretty well considering it was the first try but there were some flaws. First of all I had neglected the parachute entirely. Uh, so I've created a custom a real shoot parachute, a size really, really tiny. It's one kill. I think it's actually two kilograms. So I had to underdo the mass of the capsule. I think it's still a little bit over, oversized. I think it's one kilogram off, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, so yes, parachute is very important, and but we didn't get to the point where we brought the capsule back into the atmosphere, so we don't know how that's going to work. And it could be that it turns around this way and then the parachute will be exposed to the airstream and I don't know if that's going to be survivable or not. Uh, I'll remember to turn faster. One of our problems was that the ascent stage really has a lot of delta V, uh, sorry, thrust to weight ratio. And so we need to, well, turn, maybe we don't even need to turn. Radar Nick suggested that it just went straight up. And there is a way to go straight up and return if you're in the right location on the moon you can just go straight up instead of getting into orbit around the moon before returning so we'll consider that but yeah that's a that's a peculiar situation i'll have to think about that uh we didn't have the electric charge that we were supposed to have in the descent stage i fixed that so we have that there and uh oh yes the vernier thrusters so this is a complication i thought there were only two and on Encyclopedia Astronautica, which I hate to rely on, they said this engine, uh, the Vernier engine, had two chambers. Uh, they might have been wrong about that. The problem is, uh, so they specified two chambers and they specified the thrust. The thrust is not good enough if you have that thrust to land on the moon just on the Verniers, which NASA said it did. So NASA has an article on the Luna 15 slash 16 slash etc. Um, and they said it landed on the verniers. So either it had two of these engines, each with two chambers, or it had one and it actually had four chambers, or in some way it had double the thrust. Uh, so it, it seems like it's a four chamber thing because they, they very often, well, sometimes they have two chamber ones and sometimes they have four chamber ones. Like the crewed mission for the moon, it's, it's a two chamber thing uh, that is beside, directly beside the main engine. So, I don't know. I'm going with the four chamber one based on the thrust that two chambers provide because we need double that thrust. So that's how I've put it for now. Uh, there was an extra set of thrusters that I was missing that some reference photos shared by Raider Nick had. So that will help. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be sufficient for fuel settling, we'll see. Well, I think that just about does it. Oh yes, I made the custom fairing because, uh, well, I didn't want anybody to be too concerned about us sitting on the Block D nozzle. <laughs> so, uh, Raider Nick had suggested the Zenit uh, fairing, but Zenit is a uh, different diameter than Proton. And also, I wasn't entirely sure which one I would be using in that case. It does have one that would fit, uh, th that would fit the payload. The problem is it wouldn't fit the rocket very well. Uh, so, if we take a look here, the, there's this Block D interstage adapter. This one doesn't actually um, have the bottom node for some reason. But this fits like that. And then there's the matter of the fairing, where there is this 10.15 meter fairing. But this sort of curve, I don't think, occurs on the early proton rockets. So, I'm not sure about that. And these other ones, these are pointy, but they don't fit the base properly, and they have those logos, so sea launch logos. So I think I decided that I would just make a custom one. After I check staging, we'll see whether it all works out. Okay, so let's make sure that we are minimal as far as moon inclination is concerned. But this time I'm going to go to a 51 degree inclination on the launch because that's what they would have done. Uh, so that rather complicates when we should go. It probably We're probably going to have to do an off-plane transfer no matter what. So 
Yeah, I'll just wait a day. That would be minimal from Baikonur. But again, because we're going to a 51 degree inclination, it's sort of weird. But I'm going to use KOS to control the proton rocket. And that is because I'm going to have to do that during the mission profile series anyway. I have the HUD off and I'm not manually controlling it. I also have to cook up a landing script for it, but I haven't done that yet. But we do have the proton launch script, so... Uh, let me make sure I've got the updated version of it. The proton launch script is a little bit different than the usual ones because of the hot staging. So the hot staging timing has to be entered manually, otherwise it won't be able to do it. Normally the trigger for uh, staging is when it has no thrust. Let me just make sure, yeah, the flyby wire is off. All right. Found out the hard way during a recent stream that that router interferes with KOS. Um, we were doing a shuttle re-entry and it made the shuttle wiggle all over the place. I haven't gotten a firm answer on whether Block D captures it into lunar orbit or not. We do know it did get into lunar orbit prior to landing, unlike Surveyor. So, that, that's because of the discussions during the Apollo 11 mission time frame. Luna 15 had captured into orbit and then did something that caused it to fail. So yeah, because we're going to the 51 degree inclination, which is standard out of Baikonur, um, our inclination respected to the moon is going up. It would be nice to go to the minimal inclination out of Iconor, which is 46 degrees, but there are countries in the way, apparently. Okay, hot staging ignition and hot staging separation. So that's all timed well. A little bit of pause there. The critical thing for doing the off-plane transfer is that we get there in good time because otherwise our electric charge is going to run out. But uh, taking a look at it, it's not that easy to... Well, now we've got a ascending and descending node. Oops. Oh, we had varying separation. But yes, so we should mo we'll have to meet the moon over here and that's not too long a period. That's about six days, right? The whole lunar orbit is 28 days. A quarter of it is seven days. That's about six days. Um, if we wait a few days, we would be better off. But uh, this is just a test, so hopefully we have six days of electric charge. Otherwise, I'll do the the infinite electricity cheat. On a more serious one, we'll have to absolutely make sure that the moon is closer to our ascending and descending node before starting out. Hopefully on the right date it would be, but there's no guarantee on that because uh, things move out of position and everything is calibrated for 1950. Presumably Principia would have it right, but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't checked that the moon position is in the right place for missions like Apollo 11 or stuff like that. Usually it's a bit off. Okay, we have hot staging ignition of the verniers on the third stage and separation of the second stage. So that all goes pretty well. Good timing there. That little mound of various balls nestled in there. Raider Nick insisted I put the little balls on top of the drop tanks. There's, I think they're pressurization balls. I can't imagine what else they would be. But the drop tanks have little spheres right on top. Okay, and we are in orbit. Well, I should double check that. Yes, 280 by 240. Okay, and the inclination is 51.4 degrees. So, um, that probably should happen along with all that. So that's the ignition of block D, and I put the verniers on block D this time. And my custom shroud. So, throttles down, and off all that goes. Off all that goes. All right, okay, so they're all primed and the RCS is enabled there once we staged block D. So now let's see about that transfer. 
The offplane transfer will get us into a sort of polar orbit around the moon, I think. And that could cause us problems as far as hitting our desired location is concerned. Or we could do a mid-course adjustment to fix that. That wouldn't be a very big mid-course adjustment. Uh, maybe we don't have to settle for a polar orbit. Looks good. Six days and 18 hours though. If we go on the opposite side of the moon, the prograde direction, we would be faster. We're gonna be landing in the dark. Uh, so if we were to go straight out, so normally when you go out of lunar orbit, you want to exit like this or like that, right? So the two locations where we could just point straight up and launch would be somewhere over here and somewhere over here. Now, it's the nighttime facing side facing the Earth right now. Again, when we were supposed to launch, hopefully it'll be all right. But right now it's March 4th, 1969, because I don't want to time warp to the right time until I'm ready to do the video. And that'll be, I think, I forget which exact date, but it's July something because it was coinciding with the time frame of Apollo 11. So yeah, we'll time warp there when the time comes and hopefully the moon will be lit on this side and uh, so that it all makes sense. Uh, we, we're, we don't have any solar panels, so it's just a matter of whether I want to land in the dark. Uh, it'll probably have some you know, illumination for us. I'll try and land over here. And then we could try the launch straight up into a return trajectory idea. Then that'll save any peculiarities. It only has a 39 second burn time on the ascent stage. Oh, sorry, not 39, 53. 53 second burn time on the ascent stage. So, yeah. <laughs> Might as well go straight up. Okay, we're not gonna have that much by way of gravity losses. All right, I think I'll just do this first though. Um, six days, do we have that? Let me check our power. No, we have four days, eight, so uh, 4.8. So we are going to have to probably turn on the infinite. That'll be enough for our regular sort of mission but we are not doing it at the right time, so I'll probably have to turn on infinite electricity. Let's see if going on the opposite side will speed things up just a little bit. <laughs> not by much. So we'll just do it like this. It's possible I should put some more battery life into it. I don't know how long they expected it to hang out in lunar orbit prior to... Oh, oh I also... Went too late. Let me delay by one orbit. Yeah, I don't know how long it was going to loiter in lunar orbit before attempting the landing, too. The upper stage is not going to take that much power, so the return journey isn't going to take too much electric charge. Okay, and ignition. For some reason, Block D... Does the engine actually replenish the electric charge? Because it seems to be replenishing the electric charge. <laughs> I didn't make the block D. I'm just responsible for the probe up top. I don't know how that, that works. Stock engines do that, but the realism overhaul configurations usually remove the alternator. It's not impossible to design an alternator into a rocket engine. I don't know if it's advisable or not. Okay, we are emerging into daylight. I think I should make it a little bit lighter colored. Mostly the models of it look a little bit lighter colored. Okay, let's take a look at what's happening at the moon. Okay, a little bit off this time. Boop, boop. Okay, well, that's more inclination than I was expecting, but it'll be all right, I think. No, we can't. We don't have any backward-facing thrusters. We'll just take that. 
Okay, so we'll go straight into lunar orbit now. No mid course adjustment. And I do believe we're going to need infinite electricity because of the extra long time to the moon. Six days, 15 hours. If we had uh, launched three days later, it'd be pretty much perfect. Yeah, we're only one day in and we've already lost quite a lot. Okay, so full disclosure, infinite electricity for now. We do have depletion of liquid oxygen due to boil off. It's not going to be enough to prevent us from using this stage to get into orbit, though. The power draw was at 220 watts. I don't know how much it would actually have. By the way, the Vernier engines would definitely not look like the Vernier engines I have on here. I didn't get quite a good look at them. So that's the problem. Otherwise, I'd know how many there were. And ignition. Again, relative to the moon's orbit, maybe somewhere around here would be fine. Like there. If it's not going straight up, we'd probably want to launch over here and come down like that. That's the other option. Then we go horizontal. So basically, if we want communication with Earth, there's two basic sort of areas that it can land in. One if it can go horizontal, and the other if it just shoots straight up. So there's over here, if it shoots straight up it can go into that trajectory. But over here, if it first goes horizontal it can get into that trajectory like that. So the tangent to the lunar surface. So, but we'll go for this one. Oh, and uh, so that's lit, and that would be on the Earth-facing side, so that's actually pretty good. Because it took us six days to get here, the sun position has changed. So this is a good location overall. We'll see if it works out. Alright, so that is the engine there. Separation. Go. I don't think the block D actually took power, but let's turn off infra electricity and see. Uh, this is replenishing power somehow. Um, yeah, I might have a problem here. I don't. Oh no, it's not. I, I'm looking at the wrong thing. It's uh, a 0.2. So it's got 200 watts. That drew 20 watts of power. This draws 200 watts of power. Um, that should be enough for the remainder of the mission. Let's see. So I'll keep the infinite electricity off now. Okay, well, let's reorient. Uh, can the RCS actually settle the fuel down when we've got that one there? Yeah, it can. It'll throw us off a little bit. But it looks like it might be able to. I don't know if there's an equivalent one on the opposite side, because I didn't have a photo off the opposite side. So this side I know it sort of looks like that. This side, I have no idea. It seems to have only one ball like that, but... Okay. Surface negative. Let's just get a reference with MacJeb here, landing guidance. Again, it's, it's very possible that this stage can make orbit on its own. The catch is that the Vernier thrusters have so so little ISP, it's like 230 something. They, I don't know if they even fit vacuum nozzles on them, but uh, once we get to them for the final landing, they'll consume the fuel like crazy. So that is a catch. Okay, I think. Oops. Come on. I think right around here we'll do. See. Okay. Well, I can't sell the fuel down unless we wiggle, so off. Okay, ignition. Fuel rotation. If we have the other thruster on the other side, then it can, but... So right now I don't have the verniers on. Because they, they have so little efficiency. If they turned them on right now, we'd have much less delta V. But that could be the case, and then Block D just gets us into orbit. We'd have more delta V than we need strictly for this part, so... 
It's possible that they turned on the verniers right now. Both the main engine on here and the verniers throttle. Not deeply though, uh, to about 60-ish percent. This is not the most efficient approach right now. I'm gonna try and ignite the verniers and shut down the main engine and see what kind of thrust we get. Well, we are still slowing down. Lunar gravity wise, uh, it's not enough right now. 0.96. Ultimately, it will be. You can see the max thrust to weight ratio. Maybe we should just burn these for a little while. Just to get rid of some mass. Yeah, maybe we, maybe just burning all of them would be best. So the verniers operate at 254, not 230. 254. Yeah, but normally you'd want to approach the landing site somewhat lower. But it does, this does give us an opportunity to burn off the fuel. Okay, I'll shut down the KTDU again. I said to 12 ignitions now. It looks like our suicide burn countdown is pretty close to where it ought to be. And we just need to give the main engine a little bit more time and that'll resolve itself. But let's just make ourselves lighter here. Yeah, I think just having the verniers on right away is the best course of action. Oh. It was an arbitrary target anyway. We're in the right general location. Okay, we're, we're just wasting fuel at this point, so... Gotta turn on the main engine. I'll have to figure out how to do it a little bit better with the script. I don't know how close to the surface they just used the verniers to. Well, that'll be enough. It's certainly possible with uh, the vernier thrust we have now. And I've basically contrived to use as much of the fuel as I could, too. And... Uh, we'll just have to cut off there. Oh, okay. Alright, alright. <laughs> I'm sure KOS will do that better than I did. Okay, yep, we used as much as I could. Just for the heck of it. And we still have the ascent fuel. So, in theory, uh, we would deploy the arm, grab some, uh, it'd have a drill pop out, and grab some stuff, and then crack the arm, and then plop it in there somehow. That's a heck of a mechanism. And then, of course, before launching this, they would make sure to get that out of the way. And then we will check staging. Uh, oh my god, I didn't even use the drop tanks. Ah, oh, I forgot all about the drop tanks. I don't even need to do the drop tank thing. And I thought the fuel pri priority I had fixed. Oh, but no, it's the wrong way around. Shoot. Okay. <laughs> we have now used the drop tanks. Uh, okay. Jeez. Yeah, I was so focused on everything else, I didn't even think about the drop tanks. Okay, that. Shut down. And so in theory in this location, I'm just going to go try and go not quite straight up. We'll have to lean a bit this away, which is east. Let's see what happens. Uh, and you know what? Let me save. Luna, well, I guess 16 test because we actually landed. Okay. Um, kill rotation will probably be fine. Maybe we should go surface. Okay. Um, RCS on. And... Go. Okay. How's that look? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to judge it. We'll just, we'll just go straight up for a while. Look at that 4 G's the thrust weight ratio. Oh, 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 we fell short. 
I don't think I can do it that way unless we have more fuel than I think we do. Yeah. We ended up falling short even though I was basically straight up. Um, but the, the capsule is one kilogram heavier. Let me see. Okay, all that's off. Um, let's revert to that. Oh no, uh, load save. I really do want to get down to testing the re-entry of the capsule this time. So we'll see how that can be done if I have to do infinite electricity and wait for the right timing. Maybe, but I don't know. But I, I don't think there's any right timing. The moon is tidally locked and everything. Uh, so, <clears throat> a little bit east is what we want. I hate the high thrust weight ratio on this though. And it doesn't throttle as far as I know. The supper engine. Okay, RCS on and execute that and ignition. Oh, throttle up. Okay, aggressively pitching. I've configured the verniers on this stage to be RCS thrusters anyway, so we can stop the engine short a little bit. Basically straight up. But if this doesn't work, we're going to have to land over there instead and do it the horizontal way. Let's let's try RCS from here on. Or am I wrong that the RCS thrusters work? Uh, oh, I, I need to turn that on. I didn't even have RCS going. Huh. Okay, can we get it into Earth's atmosphere here? That's a little bit tilted too much. It should have been less than 60. Maybe, maybe 75 degrees would have been good. I have no idea how they'd get this done accurately, but this will work. So that this this idea. Uh oh. Uh oh. Um. I don't really want it that low. Okay, that seems better to me. I'm just gonna let it roll around here. So this has a power draw of 100 watts. That's actually probably too much. This didn't have that much instrumentation on it. All this stuff was in the descent section. So I'm probably gonna reduce that and that's probably not gonna be enough. Let me double check. It's only one day's worth, so yeah, that's the problem. I wonder why we're taking five days to get back. It's usually not that long. Okay, so we're going to have to do infinite electricity again. And I'll adjust the power consumption on this one. We'll probably put more power in the descent module. Well, if we reduce the power consumption on this bit, then probably the descent module doesn't need as much power to begin with. But this just needs barely anything. As far as I can tell, this is very bare bones, and that's why the whole just ascend straight up thing was suggested. I'll give it some more power though. Okay, well, we have a chance to do this finally. Let's see how it goes. As it apparently has two parachutes there because I tried to just build in a real shoot parachute into into the capsule itself. I don't that doesn't work. <laughs> so um I don't know. I, I don't think it'll work. We'll see. We might potentially have two parachutes. It says arm parachute there, but I don't think it'll really work. I don't even know if my resized real shoot parachute that I made is gonna work properly. We'll see. I've never tried that before. The one thing I didn't want to do was make a custom parachute model. I'm uh, too lazy for that. I think just to be decisive, I'll bring the periapsis a little bit lower than this. I don't want to skip out. We'll have no ability to correct anything. So just waiting until we naturally rotate in the right direction. 57 makes me feel a little bit better. So yeah, I'm gonna have to cook up some sort of landing script for for it, but fortunately that will probably 
be much more accurate at doing everything than I am. Or consistent, at least. I'm just gonna arm both parachutes now. Who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? If it turns out the one I built in the capsule works, that would be good. You know what? Maybe I should disarm the that one and wait until we see whether this one works at all. It. I mean, this scrunched up window does not make me feel particularly good about its chances, though. This one has the full window, so yeah, I'm thinking that the one inside the capsule is definitely not going to work. Let's just arm both. Okay, well, I'll wait until we're retrograde, which, I mean, I could point normal, but this will be good enough. And separation. Can't really see it, but the capsule is separated. Okay, we are now a single sphere. Oh, fuzzy. Fuzzy parachute. We have encountered the atmosphere. I didn't load this up in a way that would make it orient in a particular way. You can see 41 kilograms. I think it's supposed to be 40. Uh, Luna 16 spent 26 hours on the lunar surface. So we definitely need more batteries. Unless there's some hidden solar panel or a fuel cell that I don't know about. I doubt there's a fuel cell though. I didn't increase the heat tolerance on the real shoot parachute case. So it's just doing whatever it does. It might be so embedded in the ablator of the sphere that it's not going to have a problem, but the sphere itself, is, <laughs> the capsule has an overheating indicator. But it doesn't look too bad. Seems realistic. That's that's what I'd expect it to look like. Lots of G-forces. It's coming straight down, all right. It's not slowing down very much, uh, <laughs> as as a sphere like this probably would not. Okay, all the business has been done. It survived that much. Oh, uh, the capsule zone one seems to be misconfigured, but it did try to pop it out. I wonder what would have happened if it had actually worked. Hmm. But anyway, we have the real shoot one. Okay, the real shoot parachute is now out, and that actually looks like it's out. It's possible the other one was out too, but because I didn't make a custom model for it, it doesn't actually show it being out. Well, this other one isn't going green, so... My guess is it had no net effect. Yeah. Okay. We'll just go with the customized small Luna 15 parachute case. Seems to work just fine, even though it was subjected to intense heat, etc. So in principle, we can do it. The parts work, more or less. Just need to refine the execution a little bit. Including perhaps not having it splash down. But that's a complicated thing. That, I don't, I can't guarantee that I can make it happen that it returns to the surface. If I do a whole lot of due diligence, that might work out. But it's sure easier to just hit the Pacific somehow. Anyway, so with that general success, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, oh, let me turn off the infinite electricity just for the heck of it. But yeah, I'll just adjust the electricity amounts to make sure that we have enough buffer. But yes, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.